The other day we tried to milk the cows and it was chaos. Nothing was working right. We have solved the problem. We figured out what was wrong. There was a setting on our pump that was off. It's fixed. That was Kay's dad came, saved the day. He's a mechanical guy. And uh, today we're gonna try again. So let's milk some, some loud cows. Not like those quiet, nice, calm camels that I like to milk. Having an issue with our bucket milker, so we're gonna go to the surge milker because uh, something's up with the pulsator on the bucket milker. There might be a crack or something. We just can't get good pressure. Problem with the surge milker is we don't think it's gonna work with Luna. There's not, she's not tall enough to get the machine to work for her. So we're gonna have to see. Let's see if this how how we do. Now, uh, naughty little grasshopper got into a paddock she wasn't supposed to last night. So that's got us all twisted and tangled. Camels can't get out of the way until Grasshopper's not in there. Excuse me, Miss Mill. Cows and the camels have never been in the same paddock together. We figured, you know what? It's a good first morning to try things out. <laughs> Okay, Ladybug did not let down. Ladybug did not want to let down this morning. Let's see about Luna.
She was on the front when I left her. She didn't go for that at first. She did. Uh -huh. You are a wild little cat. I need you to hold the leg, don't forget. Okay. Alright. So we had to do a little calf share. Bring the calf on, get the calf off to make Luna let down for the machine. It's a bit of a rodeo. But during a global pandemic, you can still say, Beats going to the grocery store. Huh? Huh? <laughs> What's the matter? Are you on the Okay, well I would like to announce that we officially have three mini jerseys for sale. <laughs> but really, if you look at like which animals are new to the homestead, which we're new at, how long it takes to milk them, and you compare it with the mini jerseys, I'm just saying. Uh, you know. It took me like five minutes to milk those camels. Five minutes. Now I'm gonna come in and just say saying. something. It's gonna be too tall for you me. You want to be the defender? The defender of the mini jersey is here. Hmm. Defender of cows. Cows need a routine. These girls have been in the routine of just keeping their babies and being in the field with them yeah. every day. Yeah, so, life's been good for them. Yeah, which is fine and it's worked well for us. Nice two healthy calves. Still have cows and milk, even though we haven't been milking. Benefits of calf sharing. Calf sharing is a rodeo. Look at this morning. Yeah, but especially once you're trying to start a new routine. There's no other way that like we could have not milked for two months and then we're gonna turn on the milking now. So this week will be the week of training and routines. We will keep the calves in. When we want the cows to come down, call them down, bring the cows in the stanchion. Either use the cows to have the either use the calves to have the cows let down, or or not. We'll see how Ladybug does. She knows better. This was Luna's first day with the milking machine. She did great. She did really good. And uh, so uh, yeah, this week Kay said by the end of this week it should be down smooth again. So maybe not as smooth as camel smooth, but. It is time for the Homesteady Camel Train shout out! Today's Homesteady Camel Train shout out goes to Farm Girl. The Homesteady Camel Train shout out for the next 100 days, we're doing 100 videos. Well, at this point, it's like the next 70 days. We're doing 70 videos, a video a day about growing your own food, feeding your family the best you can from your homestead. And each video is sponsored by somebody. Today's is sponsored by Farm Girl. Farm Girl has about 50 acres in the mountains. They've been at this homestead for about six years now, but because of family health issues, they've been kind of taking it nice and slow, which I think taking it slow is a great way to homestead. 
Now it doesn't sound like they're taking it slow because at this homestead you'll find a huge garden, an orchard, quail, tons of chickens, and they're getting geese and ducks soon. So, I mean, there's a lot going on there. Farm Girl says she would love to have dairy cows someday and basically anything her husband will let her have. <laughs> Farm Girl says that they are homesteady because they research and prepare for animals before they arrive. That is very homesteady. That's like one of the homesteady tenants. Prepare, get your infrastructure in before the animals arrive. And they strive to raise, or if they can't raise it themselves, locally source most of their food. So that's fantastic. I like how reasonable that is, Farm Girl. We can't grow at all. but. No homesteaders ever did. If you look back in history, the oldest homesteaders from the late 1800s, they didn't grow all their food. They grew a lot of it, but then they would barter and trade and help each other out. So we shouldn't be striving to be totally self-sufficient. That's what the community is for. And way to go, Farm Girl. Sounds like you guys are doing an awesome part in your community in the mountains. Thanks for sponsoring this episode. Your one of a kind camel train t-shirt is on the way. You have lifetime access to the Pioneer program, which you can now enjoy. Lots of all kinds of stuff about cows and livestock and all that other stuff. So do as much research as you need to before you get that dairy cow. Tell your husband, get a dairy cow. It's, it's a good thing to have, especially in times like these. Let's get back to the episode. So sheep, you saw that we just got some sheep in the last uh, last week, we picked them up, but we haven't talked about them much yet. We're gonna have some noisy calves yelling at us this whole video. Uh, maybe I'll do most of the talking about sheep inside the barn so we don't have to listen to that the whole time. These are mostly Katahdin. Mostly Katahdin, which are a hair sheep. We got them as feeders. They are all going to go into the freezer. I always suggest when you are new to livestock or a certain livestock, start with feeders, not breeders. So we have no intentions of breeding these. We're starting with them as feeders and they're gonna go in the freezer. Today we have to get this set up a little bit better so they have more room under our little hoop house. They have a warm place to eat. They got a nice safe place to have dry hay. So we're gonna get to work and then I'll talk about sheep in the barn where you can hear me over trucks, wind, and mooing calves. which is what the sheep have been using for a little warm house to sleep in. I also wanted to have room for the calves because we're separating calves again and we're using this spot to separate calves. So I have this little divider here keeping the sheep and the calves separate. The calves can go over here on this side and the sheep can be on this side. Everybody can get protection from the rain. Everybody can get protection from the elements, the wind, under our, our uh, tarp hoop house here sheep get nice little uh, dry place to sleep. The calves are hardened off. They're pretty tough on the elements. Sheep are going to be fine too, but just nice for everybody, especially with their transition. Now the sheep also have a dry place where we can store their hay, which is important, and their grain. We're not graining them much, just a little bit, so they get to know us and they're nice to us. All right, the sheep have their side of the house all set. The cows are on their side. Everybody's good. Let's go in the barn and talk sheep. So sheep, we got some sheep. This has caused quite a stir on our channel in the comments section because everybody knows that Aust is anti-sheep. I am definitely not anti-sheep. In fact, I would say I am not anti any animal on a homestead. Uh, I have said in the past a few different times, I do not suggest sheep for beginners. I do not suggest small ruminants for beginners. All the trouble we've had with livestock, all the hard things we've had happen, 
has happened usually to small ruminants. Sheep are more susceptible to worms, which many of you know we've had issues with on this homestead. So I am not anti any animal. Hey bud. I'm not anti any animal. They're livestock. There are so many different kinds of livestock for so many different purposes. Goats are a really hard animal for some people, myself included. But there are places and needs on certain farms where goats are perfect. The same could be said of chickens, mm. right? Are chickens good for everybody? No. Wow, I'm shocked you said that. You're getting to be a wise old man. I thought you would have surely said chickens are good for everybody. Mm. Who would chickens not be good for? People in the city, Here, maybe. Move over a little so they can see you. People in the city, maybe? People in the city? I don't know, chickens would be good for people if they had a little space in the city. How about people who have a coyote farm? <laughs> chickens who would not be good for people who are allergic to chicken eggs, how's that? Yeah. <laughs> chickens I think would be good for almost everybody. So but people who live in the North Pole you can't even have chickens. There you go, maybe if it's too cold, not enough light Maybe they should make a winter breed of chicken. White feathers, black animal. The point is, uh, there is a purpose and a place for every livestock. I don't suggest beginner homesteaders go and get sheep or goats. I don't suggest a beginner homesteader go get a mini jersey, although I think they're one of the best animals you can have on your homestead. Besides chickens. Besides chickens. I don't suggest a beginner homesteader go and get camels, although I think they'd be a much better fit for more people than milk goats, honestly. They're so compared, much better. Compared to chickens. Compared to chickens. The point is, uh, there's a good reason for all livestock somewhere. I just don't suggest them a lot of times on the topics we cover. We cover a lot of beginner topics, and uh, so I often am discouraging sheep. But that doesn't mean there isn't a good reason to have sheep, and we have a very good reason to have sheep right now. Our current uh, situation with the, the diet that Kay's on, lamb is one of the meats that she can eat. And lamb is very expensive. We have been buying lamb from an awesome grass-fed farm that we're actually gonna get do an interview with not too long from now. Uh, but lamb is a very, um, high quality premium product and if you're buying a lot of lamb like we are right now you are spending a lot of money we have a huge field full of green beautiful grass uh, we have a great opportunity we have the this spot here I mean like for us we should be raising sheep so here's the thing there is the issue of worms A lot of you remember what happened back this last year with our goats. We had a very bad issue with our pregnant does having a heavy worm load. Sadly, we lost two of our does who had kitted to uh, worms. The real reason why we lost those two does to the worms, uh, there was two reasons. First off, we had been treating them with the same dewormer that the worms had developed a resistance to. Uh, unfortunately, the worms had developed a resistance to that dewormer that we were using. It's the first time we've experienced resistance to a dewormer and we didn't shift quickly enough and we lost our two does. Now here's the interesting thing to know. We had six, six or seven goats at the time. We only lost the two does who kitted. Kitting is a very, stressful process. Pre anyone who's gone through birth knows, any animal who's gone through birth, it's a very uh, taxing process on the body. It pulls nutrients, there's blood loss, there's a lot of things going on at birth. So those pregnant does who kitted were already in a very weakened state when then the worms were able to kind of just take over and they succumbed to the worm load. The kid goats that we had were all excellent shape healthy blood counts, red, red eyes when you did the Fumancha test, they were all fine. The issues we had were with the does that kitted. So a lot of people have been saying, why are you getting sheep now? Sheep are very susceptible to worms too. That's true. Two things have changed. One, we now have a really great dry lot where we can pull the sheep anytime. We had no dry lots for the goats. We had the same paddocks, but they were growing grass. And when the goats were in these paddocks, not out in the pasture, they were eating grass that had a heavy worm load. So that was part of the issue. 
So now we have a dry lot, we can move the sheep to the dry lot, they'll be totally safe there. And when we get them out in the grass, out in the pasture, we're gonna have an improved uh, high tensile fencing. We'll be able to move them. How many camel trains do you have left if you sold one now? Oh, we're down to like four. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. So now we're gonna have a high tensile fencing. We're gonna be able to move them out around the grass. If we have conditions that are not favorable, we can put them on our good dry lot. But we also have no pregnant ewes. We're not gonna be birthing, we're not breeding sheep. We are raising sheep for meat. Kay needs to have lamb in the freezer. We have grass, we have dry lots, we have a barn full of good quality hay. We are in a perfect place to raise our own lamb for her to eat. These are mostly Katahdin, although they're not like pure Katahdins, they've been crossbred. The Katahdin breeding registry is pretty lenient, so a lot of Katahdins are partially other things. We didn't pick uh, Katahdins or hair sheep specifically for any reason other than we needed sheep fast for Kay's diet. We're all out of the lamb in the freezer. We went and bought more because I know these ones aren't gonna be ready till the fall. But we just needed lamb. We found a place nearby selling some lambs. We thought, you know what, perfect. Let's grab a couple of them. And uh, we haven't, we're not suggesting Katahdin as a great breed. We're not suggesting hair sheep specifically. Although in the past we have talked about the benefits of hair sheep, uh, not having to deal with, if you're not into doing fiber and, and all that, you don't have to deal with that, the shearing and things. Uh, but that's what we're doing. So we got our Katahdin lambs for meat. We're gonna be raising them, getting them out on pasture eventually this year. But first I have to start training them to electric and we will start that, probably gonna start that this week. Uh, I would have started it this morning, but we had to work with their housing. So that's the sheep story. Any questions, let me know below and we can answer them in Ask Homestead.